<laughs> you the hey guy today? What are you doing? <laughs> Hopefully everybody had a wonderful weekend. Welcome back to the Riot Work Week. Yay. Welcome back to the uh, whatever Well, I wasn't call. sure. You might have class or it might not be a work day for you, this. but it's officially our Riot Work Week. So we're back. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's all you got? Well, I mean, I gave you a whole show. Okay, and you gave me a lot of yeah. So yeah, I mean, like <laughs> you've given all. I, I, <laughs> okay, you can still power through. Why don't you give us the list of some of the things we're covering in the podcast today? Uh, there's a lot of movie talk. We talk about what did well and didn't over the weekend. Plus, somebody maybe gets a little unhinged about what else is coming did out you this put year. That in there, yeah, it's in there. <laughs> it's like uh, if you listen closely, literally, there's a negative point about every movie all the way from now until December. I don't mean to be bad. <laughs> hey, they're not giving you much to work with. All right. Uh, we also talk about what happened to Target this weekend. Your breakfast burritos, rock climbing. Uh, how to get a raise. Um, we talk about I Am Mother, that movie on Netflix, uh, and ways to stop bad habits. And hey, would you mind if we put this dead whale in your yard? Please. So They say please. And you know what? Sometimes <laughs> please is all the difference. Actually, though, going into that article, I don't think we stressed enough how we really thought there was some sort of money exchange yeah. um, with it, but they're not. They're just asking nicely if you wouldn't mind letting it. It's already dead, but if you wouldn't mind letting it decompose in your yard by the water, that'd be great. We're just going to leave it. Don't look. Let's not make a big deal out of it. <laughs> we just. Did you your hear music that playing something? What's your laptop playing? It was a nice like chime. I don't know what that was. Well, we'll figure it out. I've, I've never it's heard that whale. sound. Never heard that sound before. The whale saying, why won't you let me rot in peace right outside Leave your me. place? Leave me to die with dignity. <laughs> uh, well, hey, you guys have a great uh, Day. whatever this is. And we'll talk at you later. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget riot.radio.com. It's got an archive. If you missed our Riot Live game night from last week, you can watch that anytime you want and you can connect with us there. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 The only morning show brave enough to say that Chicken McNuggets are part of a balanced breakfast. <laughs> The Riot on Radio U. Nikki, did you do any Target shopping on Saturday? I did not. Because you couldn't. Was, oh, I did hear about that, though. It was crazy. I. <laughs> it oh. shows you how, like, our society could, like, crumble in a moment. Absolutely. Not just if you're like, oh, you don't go to Target. It doesn't matter. This could go like a wide scale thing. <laughs> Absolutely. There were 1,850 Target stores in the United States, which I... I didn't realize there were that many. Uh, I don't know if that's a lot or not a lot, but uh, their cash register, like point of sale system, went down for more than an hour. I think in most places it was a couple of hours, and so they couldn't really check you out. They, like, not at all. It was just like, look, we can't, you can't buy anything here. Sorry. (laughs) Couldn't buy anything online. Can't buy anything in the store. And that doesn't go well when you've especially taken the time to go through the entire store. Uh, So a lot of the targets just closed because they couldn't do anything about it. And then some of them stayed open. And I don't know if they... Did they write it out by hand? I'm not sure what they were doing, but they said some people had to wait up to an hour. They could still get them checked out, but not like checked out through their system. Here's what I love. They said a lot of the targets ended up just handing out free popcorn and ice cream. That's not enough. It's not? No, it's not enough. And I thought they stopped making the popcorn at Targets. Wasn't that a thing, too? Because when I read that, I thought of you because you like your Target popcorn. I'll just tell you right now. (laughs) Seriously, if If Target stops making popcorn, they don't have anything. (laughs) Because everything else they have, I can just buy it somewhere else and probably cheaper. Uh, I'll have to look it up. But I think they said they were going to start phasing that out. If not, I've just made it up. If that is true, they have made, like, that is a great example of the people at the top being clueless. (laughs) It's kind of like when you go fly with an airline and they've they've taken everything away. They're like, no peanuts. What are we even here for right now? (laughs) Well, I'll have to look it up. I can't confirm that. But that's what I thought that was something a few weeks ago. Okay. So, uh. Uh, I love this interview. Some customers admitted they wish they'd gone to Walmart instead. Oh, no. (laughs) You wouldn't have liked it no matter what. No, I'm just telling you again, I would rather be at Walmart if Target's not going to have any any popcorn. I mean, what what am I even doing there? In the fantasy 
fantasy world, you know, where sometimes you just read those warm, fuzzy stories, what you really would have liked is them to say, oh, we're so sorry for the inconvenience. You may go on through. Just take what was in your cart. Go on through. Just take what you want and go ahead and go. But, of course, a big company is probably not going to do that. (laughs) But it would have been nice. It would have been real nice. Yeah, because it's just disappointing. Yeah. Well, you know what? A lot of people are disappointed with Target for a lot of reasons. I'm not going to say But that was an official one on Saturday. So in case you're like, why was it closed down for a few hours? That's why. Yeah. If it's louder than it has to be and way worse than it has any right to be, it must be the worst of the riot. On Radio U. Hey, were you going to eat that this morning? That there, that breakfast burrito Mm -mm. that you're toying around with? You shouldn't at this point. I don't know if that's such a very good idea. Um, Look, I... I know that it's a, a gas station staple, and I know that it is not fair for me, who eats the gas station hot dog, <laughs> to stand in judgment. <laughs> to throw hot dog stones in the glass gas station house. It, it's really unfair. But one thing that I've never, ever wandered into was the microwavable burrito. No? No. Never? No. It's an art. You have to I, learn it. I feel like, and again... I realize that this is the pot calling the kettle black kind of thing, but I just feel like there are a couple of levels below the gas station hot dog, and that's where the microwavable burrito lives. Now, are you talking about the microwavable burrito from a gas station or like just from the grocery store? I include them in the same category. See, that's shocking. It's I don't, the same. I, I don't know if I agree with your placement of it. Sure. Though I'm sure they're all still equally low. Well, I see that you're pro burrito then. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm they, not, but I'm just surprised you'd put anything from a grocery store underneath a gas station hot dog. Well, okay. Listen, there's a lot of things you can get at a grocery store. Just because they're selling it there <laughs> doesn't mean it's a good thing. No, but I feel like there's more to it than whatever they're putting on the rolling thing. Uh, maybe. Maybe. So did you see the recall, though? Is that what you were mentioning? Yeah, you know. Uh, there is, uh, there's a company called El Monterey where the best burritos are made. You guys know the Monterey. <laughs> and, uh, they Actually, make... I've had one of theirs before. Have you? I think so. It's what's a, your re- it's what's a... your recollection? No, it's just a popular company. So I bet you most people, if you're into breakfast burritos, you probably had one. And they say that they have recalled 246,000 pounds of these burritos. They were made in Denison, Texas, and they believe that these burritos have small rocks in them. Oh, yeah. That'd be weird to eat. <laughs> are they serious right now? Well, I mean, small rocks. It's very small ones, though. They oh. are saying that. It, so, I, I mean, I guess there's that, right? What What's a couple of small rocks between friends? I thought since it's from Texas, it'd be big rocks, but it's just small <laughs> ones. So this is a good thing. So, well, you know what? That's a really good point. Can you? Okay, like you've bitten down on food before. You're like, I'm gonna take a Am bite. Cracker- you're chewing, and then you're like. What is that? What if it cracked a tooth? And then all of a sudden you pull out a rock. There's a rock in your burrito. And if you think there, no, this is not a, this might be a problem. They've had customers complaining about finding rocks in their burritos. what if, walk with me, this is a new trend for the dieting world where you're like, I want to eat my breakfast burrito but still lose weight. (laughs) What, what if it works? And you're like, these, are you into the rock diet? <laughs> these new dietary rocks, Woo! what they help with is they actually make you feel full, mm-hmm. but they have no fat or calories. And eventually your teeth are all chipped away, well, so you can't really eat much. <laughs> you know, Nikki, what are you, what are you willing to do? What I mean, you... we all want to be you know, ready for the swimsuit season, so right. we've waited so long. What are you willing to do? <laughs> I just do? feel so bad because most companies, you know if you found a rock in your burrito, you tell people, they're like, you're just lying. They're not oh, going yeah, to believe you. you. And it took several people uh, you know, to then make them realize they need to recall these items. And you're one of the poor people in the beginning who ate the rock. Mm-hmm. They didn't believe. Now, that means that if they've got three people that admit to finding rocks, there are lots of people that didn't. You didn't even notice that you ate the whole you burrito. You ate the rocks. Well, I guess okay? And I would eat a rock over a bug if it was small enough. For them to do a recall like this, 
they must know there's so many rocks out there. So many. <laughs> because that means that they, the cost of the recall is cheaper than paying the settlements. Yeah. That's what that is. So Cody just texted, are you guys talking about breakfast burritos? Yes, we are. Because he, he's eating one now. His is a homemade one, though. Well, I hope it's wonderful. Cody, looks like you're missing the rocks. Hey, I make, I'll tell you, I make a good homemade breakfast burrito right now. Get some uh, apple bacon sausage and some eggs, some cheese. Some mm. Tiny little rock. The riot is to your ears what all those energy drinks are to your liver. For the love of God, please stop. I can only process so much. Oh. The Riot Radio U. You know what? If you're like me, you're patting yourself on the back because you got out of bed today. Woo! Yay, can we all just applaud for everybody who's done that? You know, sometimes, Nikki, you got to focus on what you're doing well, and not a, on what you're not doing. That's a check right there. Like, check. you accomplished something. Check. It's exciting, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, while you and I were working to achieve what would be considered on society's point of view, the bare minimum. A basic goal. <laughs> just just trying to survive. You've got Sayla. She's 10 years old. She's from Glenwood Springs, Colorado. And over the weekend, uh, she became the first or the youngest ever to climb the 3,000-foot nose route on El Capitan in Yosemite Park. Ooh. So she achieved something at 10 that you'll oh, never she's achieve. A, she's 10 years she's old. She's 10. She's well, 10 years old. Good for her. I mean, and then you know what's nice? She knows her career. Like, she's, that's what she's going to do for a living. Is there what? money in rock there climbing? There must be. Is there? There must be. Probably what sponsorship you, and stuff. You, I bet there. Listen, the, <laughs> those. Uh, there shouldn't be money in rock climbing, all right? The rock climbing companies, I'm sure, are just clamoring okay, after this. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> Follow the money, uh-huh. right? So the rock climbing companies are selling the gear? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. And then how she's like, "How many rock climbers are there, and how many competing companies can there be that they're manufacturing gear at such a rate that they need celebrity rock climbing endorsements?" I think it's more of a sponsorship thing, and I bet you there's. Is it a write-off? I bet there's competitions, and there's just things that we don't know about because we're not in that world. Because we're not in that. Yeah, space. absolutely. And they're like, "Of course, we're going to sponsor the ten-year-old who made it up El Capitan the nose section." So. <laughs> Right now, somebody is working up a text telling us all about how amazing rock climbing is and how, if you only knew how, I mean, big rock climbing paid for all this. Right. And then every time they'll talk about her and her her amazing uh, routes and stuff that she takes, they'll be like, and this was, look, she did this in her mountain climbing shoes, you know, brought to you by such and such. She did this in the Spiergen 3000. It's nice, I, I guess, to see people so motivated at 10. That's great. Yeah. It makes you yeah. feel bad. <laughs> and I'd say she has nowhere to go from here, but she does. There's other things she can do. Like, she just climbed Everest at 11. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> she was 10 and a half. I don't think that's ever... I watched um, a couple of YouTube videos of this couple who did... They went to the summit for Everest. Yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh, what a trip. Like, what a check right there. Yeah. Like, that's a bucket list sort of thing. And then I thought, I never want that on my list. <laughs> I don't want do that. Never want to. I don't want to do that. But I then they had some people who took helicopters to like certain sections. I thought, well, maybe that's what we can do. Oh yeah, I mean, like I'm game for that, I guess. Uh, but even even that, I don't know. No interest. <laughs> I no. But if you had I, the right gear, and we knew what gear to have, because of this ten year old. One of my, I think, my biggest problems in life is that I'm okay with just looking at the picture. That's, I mean, I think we could argue that photography has stolen my wanderlust because I'm just like, yeah, it's, the picture's fine. I'm good. All you have to do is watch the video and you don't feel you, like you've been there. Don't you want to see it with your own eyes? Nah. Yeah. I mean, this is fine. <laughs> well, congratulations to her, though, at 10 years old. That is, that is something. <laughs> oh, oh, it's something. So we're fine. Good for her. Oh, yeah. They even make morning people want to reach for the snooze button. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. I feel like there's some, we're not journalists, but I feel like there's some journalistic integrity. We need a little follow up. Okay. We need (laughs) something else. Because Nikki and I spoke a couple minutes ago about a 10 year old that just made this 3000 foot ascent on the nose of El Cap there in Yosemite National Park. Was that a lie? No. Okay. So she did. 
But she did. But I feel like we need the counterpoint. Because a lot of us were just like, I'm such a loser. The only climb I could make today was out of bed. You could barely do the steps at work. Man, I'm just like, why can't but I do something with my life? Was she carried? Or was there a, a catch to it? No, Nikki. I just feel like we need to look at what happened in it was this Montana oh, over we the, the weekend. the opposite? Yes. <laughs> okay. I want you to know that there was a, a 23-year-old. Uh, That's do, more our style. Yeah. And do I have, I don't, actually, I don't think they've released his name yet. And he was climbing on a practice rock. Yeah. Practice. Do you know what that means? That means easy. Uh, that that's the yeah, but it's still rock climbing. So easy is still above like our normal day to day stuff. Now, Nikki, I don't want you to think that I am in any way trying to take away from You're what he was doing. Yeah, yeah okay. that's not what I'm doing. But what I'm trying to do is give us a little reality check. Sure, he's climbing on a practice rock, fell twenty feet, critical condition. Yes, and he had to be airlifted out. And taken to the hospital. Seems like we've been reading a lot of stories about About people who need airlifted out and rescued from certain situations to where we say, don't put yourself in that position in the first place. Yeah. So I'm just trying to show you that like today, maybe you woke up and you were like, you know what? I'm not going to let some 10 year old beat me. I'm going rock climbing and I'll show them. But I just wanted to show you that while there was a big, successful rock climbing story in the news over the weekend. There's the other side. There is another story about a guy that fell 20 feet. That girl climbed 3,000 feet. This guy fell 20. Okay. And just, you know, there are two things that can happen in this rock climbing thing. Well. Let's let's add a third one though. How about nothing at all happens because you're not doing it at all? Yeah, I know that's the that's the one like I'm opting in for. I think that's a more uh, that's a better approach for us. That's more yeah. our speed. Yeah, I know. I and I, you know what? I completely agree with you. If you want to be like, hey, I put the incline up on the treadmill at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's as, that's as much climbing as you can do. A lot of times I put it at one, but today I put it at a one point five. And way to go. Yeah. That's an accomplishment. I got to tell you, though, my hammy's feeling a little tender. Yeah, but no one had to rescue you with a helicopter. True story. So it's better. True story. I just, again, I want you guys to hear both sides. Of the story. Of the, of the way this kind of stuff goes, you Before know? Before you go out and get your equipment, because yeah. you're going to go climb something. Yeah, just really, really research it first. Uncomfortable silences during that morning carpool? Not a problem. These two never shut up. It's the riot Riot on Radio Radio U. U. I just want you to know that you might be better off without the internet today. Because while there are wondrous things that you can see that are so glorious and fun and could enrich your life, there are also things that I'm just going to go ahead and open up the nightmare fuel category and put it in there and just know that what has been seen cannot be unseen. I couldn't look very closely at it. There's a photo out there of a python eating a whole crocodile. There's not even photos. I think there's video. You can watch it. Think about that for a minute. There, You know how big a crocodile is? It's big, okay? <laughs> even little ones are big. They're still big. And so here's a python, like... Eating a grown-up crocodile, not a baby crocodile. You could probably eat a baby crocodile. It was in Queensland, Australia, and a kayaker spotted uh, what was going on. A kayaker? Yeah, a kayaker. They said that pythons will often target freshwater crocodiles, and they go after them to eat them. You should never go to Australia. There's so (laughs) much there that can kill you. That is true. You don't even know. Like It is this crazy, dangerous place. You should never go there. They say that it's an olive python. It's Australia. What's an olive python? I think they're just from its coloring and stuff. Olives? (laughs) No. They they like they uh, they like like crocodiles with a little olive. Little olive oil in it. It's a good fat, so it's fine. They say Um, it is. (laughs) No, basically, the olive python is the second largest snake in Australia, and they're not poisonous or anything. But it's the ones that squeeze enough, and then they'll kill you, or they'll just eat you outright. You know why they're not poisonous? Because they don't need to be. (laughs) That's exactly. If they, they were, they don't see the need to poison you. They just want to kill you slowly by <laughs> suffocating you and or snapping your back. So it's fine. And then they eat you whole you to be what, slowly digested. You want to know what the grossest thing is? Is I feel like I think it's just rocks and stuff, but it also looks like bugs are all over the snake and the 
crocodile in one of the pictures and oh it's well just you know how you know how it is when you're living in freshwater in australia you're just hopping on you got occasion for things to take a little ride with you yeah that seems like a a nightmare yeah well I, kudos to the kayaker because here like we just kayak and it's like i just went down the river or just a little creek this is some some stuff there they don't make guns big enough for me to be like, yeah, I'll just kayak on this thing. And you know what? I'll... <laughs> I don't know if that'll help you. <laughs> you need a knife at that point. If they're going to, if the snake's going to come and a get you knife, or the crocodile. A knife. You need an RPG. That's a rocket propelled grenade. You need enough to where you no longer can float in the kayak because you're carrying so much ammo with you. Yeah. No, I mean, it's <laughs> it's truly going to be not an option as so, I... For all of pythons, I say it's common for them to eat anything that they can get in their mouth. And some people have them as pets. So what are they, like a child? They can unhinge their jaw and extend the bite, which is why it can fit such a big thing in it. Yeah. Don't you think they ever say to themselves, like, maybe that's too much? It looks like it's overeaten. Really? It does. You know, like, you know, when you've overeaten and you just feel bloated. I know that feeling (laughs) because... You know, you're at a restaurant, the food's so good. Yeah, you're you like, I don't, eating. like, oh man, I don't want to let this go to waste. Instead, I'm going to slap it on my waist. So you unhinge the jaw. Apparently, and- they, I mean, they're saving it for later in their body. So that is one thing. And to us, it looks like they've overeaten, but they're just putting it in there. It sounds like something your dad would say. Yeah, I'm just saving, saving that it for, for later. later. <laughs> <laughs> so that picture is floating around in case you want to see it. It's the olive python eating the freshwater crocodile in Australia. I'm just saying right now, I don't want to know there's things like this out there. I just don't want to know about it. I'm sure they're out there. Allow me to live ignorant, <laughs> blissfully so. In peace. Obadiah and Nikki tried their hardest. And that's what really matters. This is the worst of the Ryan podcast. Wait a minute, you with the juice? <laughs> it is the riot. Oh. He can't help himself with that song. At the end. Gets you every time. Every time. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'm in my car all by myself. No, and I'm just, just like, <laughs> just whenever. You're not the only one, I bet. I bet there's I 20 other be. people that do that, too. I can't be. And you know what else it makes me think of? If anybody saw Arrested Development where Buster goes to the party and they have unlimited juice. <laughs> Does he do that line there? Well, no, but he's just like, unlimited juice? This party's going to be off the hook. Every time you think that. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Like, you know, I can't think of anything without thinking of something else. That's Everything fine. makes me think of something else, which makes me think of something else, which is why I can sit in a room alone and just stare off into space and, and keep be completely occupied. entertained. <laughs> Maybe that's nice. You have a lot of uh, memories that that it triggers from shows and movies that you've watched. I just need a starter. Say a word. Lock me in a room. I'm completely fine. You've lived a full life. You've got a lot in your head. Oh, yeah. Hey, (laughs) I added more to my head over the weekend. Uh, I watched Netflix. I watched a whole movie on Netflix, which I never do. I always fast forward. Skip ahead. Leave it Finally, in the queue. Just open up Wikipedia and read the ending. But I watched all of I Am Mother this weekend. Was that the one people were encouraging us to watch with the uh, the robot mom? Yep, that's the one. That we said, wouldn't it be ironic to watch the robot mom movie on Father's Day weekend? But I watched it on Friday. Uh, so I mean, enough. but it was it was the the mother movie on Father's Day weekend. Mm. It was pretty good. Was it? It it is a slow movie. Like it it is slow moving vehicle. Like it just but does it I, feel like a Netflix movie? You know, like just slightly under a theatrical release, or was it? Um, I asked myself that question. Like, would people have gone to see this in the theater? And I feel like the answer is no. Not that that's a negative thing. I don't feel like it is anymore because I feel some movies I I actually more interested in when it's not at a theater and I don't have to go see it and right. I, it's just right there. It's more convenient, so it doesn't have to be this giant big blockbuster. I I don't know. I kept asking myself like, if this movie was in a theater, would I have paid to go see it? Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't answer it because. Because they would, of course, I feel like they would have had to sell it to me a little different, different kinds of trailers and different things. And eventually I might be like, oh, yeah, I'll go see it. But uh, the girl that is the lead, I don't know how she's supposed to be in the show or how the actress is, but she does a great job. Like, great job. Really good. She carries the movie. And the robot was designed by Weta Workshops, you know, the 
people that did Lord of the Rings, et cetera, oh, yeah. et cetera. And you know what? It was fantastic. And he just texted from Pennsylvania. He says he enjoyed it, too. It was a slow movie, but a good one. Yeah. like, And I feel like you don't get a good slow burn like that very often. So I do feel like they... Uh, I, I mean, I felt like in the first roughly five minutes, I was like, oh, yeah. Like, like I guess You had it figured out? Oh, yeah. I mean, there were like one or two scenes where I was like, well, maybe not. But for the most part, within like the first five or ten minutes, I was like, yeah, you're good I, at know, that, though. I know exactly what they're doing here. Well, here's the thing you got to remember is that anytime you see something in a movie, nothing is just there. <laughs> It's not, Nothing. It's like when there's a guest star on like one of the crime TV shows and it's like, well, obviously the guest star is going to be the bad person because they're the guest star. So that, surprise. That is exactly <laughs> it right there. And it's just you that can thing. figure it out. Every every detail that gets dropped, every word that is spoken, especially is never a wasted moment. So if you're paying attention, they'll tell you in the first five to 10 minutes of a movie is setting up what the ending is going to be. So unfortunately, if you pay attention, which I do, you get it by then you get, you get what's going to happen. What was it called? The I I, am mother. I am mother. I thought it was worth, it was worth my time. I watched it and then I, okay, this is a little embarrassing, but I also ended up seeing the Jennifer Aniston, Adam Sandler movie. People said that was supposed to be good. Were they was lying? It? Was it? Well, yeah, but like Adam Sandler good. He is, if not the one of the closest to, biggest number person for Netflix. Netflix yeah, like I get that. He does huge amount of stuff. So everybody makes fun of the movies, but they all watch it. I guess. That's the first Adam Sandler movie I've watched on You've Netflix. Seen? Yeah. <laughs> was it good? Yeah. Uh, was it okay? I don't know. Did I laugh a couple of times? Yes. That's all you're looking for then. Was I embarrassed that I watched it? Yes. <laughs> Can I blame it on the people I was with? Yes. But you know what? Well, there's two movie reviews right there from the weekend. Negative. A lot of negative peer pressure around those Adam Sandler movies, right? That's why they always pull in big numbers. Yeah, but the pizza was good. So, Gosh. like that's, that's something. You had a busy weekend, didn't you? <laughs> that's- Giving every novelty food the publicity it so blatantly desires. It's The Riot on Radio U. (laughs) Nikki, in front of me, I have, uh, according to this article, ways for you to get a raise. Yeah, what do we got? Are you, do you want a raise? Everybody's in the market for a raise. Are they? Everybody is. You know, none of us are just content to allow life to bring what it brings. Well, it's always something to keep working towards. Yeah, and because you want to be happier and more money always means that you're (laughs) going to be happier. Okay, well, way to just stomp all over the raise thing. (laughs) What? Well, I'm just trying... Okay, look, I'm just trying to put it in perspective. perspective. Well, let's before, get the list. Before we explore it, I want us to know, why do you want a raise? What would you do with the extra money? And then decide maybe if it's you... Not, maybe it's not worth it for you at the time. Yeah, maybe, maybe a raise. Maybe you should continue working hard for very little money. <laughs> that, well, let's hear the list okay. just in case. Maybe we will want one. Okay, so uh, what you want to do is... Wait, what movie was that from? Did it for very little money? It's, it's from our liner. Sign, yeah, it's in a liner. Yeah, what movie is it from, though? It's from Seinfeld. Seinfeld, okay. Yeah. It's when... It's when Newman and Kramer are trying to convince a bunch of homeless people to be rickshaw runners, and it goes from there. Okay. (laughs) Um, So, uh, can you set yourself apart? Uh, Are you effectively demonstrating your key skills next to your fellow workers? Okay. You know, like Nikki, are you and I talking more than the other people in this room are talking? It's just us in this room. Well, (laughs) that's all we have to go with. Okay. Um, you need to learn new skills and earn certifications. Oh, so, so always keep working uh, towards like newer it things for your job. Yeah. So like you and I would go and get a word perfect certification so we could show all of our word processing skills. Oh, that's a good choice. We have a little certificate that we yeah. could show and they would be like, man, you're a value add. Actually, that's not a bad idea when maybe not necessarily in our job, but, you know, technology always changes things. So okay. it's good to be learning. Ask for a performance review. Ooh. Just go in and say, hey, I want a review because then if my review is good, show me the money. I don't think you can ask that. Okay. Um, They say that, you know, sometimes you're better off not being a leader 
just working hard but not taking responsibility for other people? Not too much responsibility. Because so, you know. if you are the leader and taking on more responsibility, if the people below cause problems, it comes back to you eventually. And Might be on you. Then you're not getting anything else. Uh, how about this? Uh, they say to learn the lingo. Become better at the language that gets used in your particular field. And they say by using that language, Mm -hmm. you'll sound smarter. And then maybe they'll give you, these are ways to get a raise, they're saying in your job. Yeah. And the last thing that they say is maybe it's not so much about getting a raise, but getting better perks Sure. at your job. So maybe you could get them to install a gym. You know, anything some, yeah something like that it might not be the best one to start it's off probably, with you know that needs to be a group one. of people at the job that are working together who want to get that so you know perks 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 so anybody want to take those and try to get a raise I, you know what i want you guys to let us know how it goes i know i'd be too afraid though like i took the riots uh instructions that morning and i got fired do you guys <laughs> do you guys have any jobs available <laughs> I need hired. <laughs> Do you guys have tips on how to get a job? Never mind. You ruined my life. <laughs> so I maybe don't use what we just gave you, even though that wasn't our study or our wasn't details. Our list. Wasn't don't our we list. Were just co-opting. <laughs> so, you know. Just uh, read the room. So know what you need to do with your job. And that'll be on you. Read the room. The riot really wanted to do this live, but now they can play video games and eat rice cakes instead. This is the worst of the Riot Podcast. I need to confirm that this is for sale here in the United... Oh, yeah, it is. Is okay. it? What is it? Are you familiar with the Pavlock? The Pavlock? <laughs> the Pavlock. Mm-hmm. The Pavlock 2 is a habit conditioning device. And here's the idea. So this is the second one? Yeah, it is. Now, uh, I'll pass it over to you, Nikki. Looks you like a I've- Fitbit. It does look like a Fitbit, but it's going to change your life forever. It's going to tie into your own, uh, your automatic responses down at the the animal level, right? Because right now you're just like, I just can't quit doing blank. I just can't quit. I just can't stop myself. Well, here, this will help you. Guess what the Pavlock does? Oh, I know. I see what it does because it's got a little lightning bolt on it. Mm -hmm. It shocks you. Yeah, it does. Do you set it up to shock you at certain times? or? Well, it, uh, as I understand it, uh, what you do is, uh, I guess you set it. And forget it. Now. And forget it. <laughs> I, and just let yourself be shocked all day long. The only thing that I'm not sure about is like how you program it to zap you. But what it does is, like, let's say that you're engaged in a behavior when you're like, I have to quit doing this. This delivers an electric shock to you. So you wear the shock shock clock on the inside of your wrist. So like if imagine a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, you know, uh-huh. the, the big parts on the top of your wrist. Yeah, this is on the bottom. Turn it in on the other side and the little lightning bolt side is where you get shocked. Yeah. So it delivers a shock. And the idea is. It looks like an alarm thing, mostly. The Well, it's there to wake you up. Mm. Uh, you, you can set it to be something that wakes you up. But then the other thing that you can have it do is. Again, if you're trying to change a behavior, some people, Nick, I've heard Nikki talk about it. You wear a, a rubber, rubber band, band on your wrist yeah. and you just snap yourself with a rubber band when you're about to do something you're not supposed to. People do that like um, if you bite your nails or if you have some other habit. Which you're I trying don't understand. To... Bite your nails. They're good. You're not supposed to bite your nails. Says who? Says the... Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Says your body because no. it can be bad for you. No, it can be. You can get little infections and just as gross and you're just and you're unhappy. No, nope. I'm Aren't very you happy because you're biting your nails down. Well, Nikki, if that's the case, then we need to locate what's it in my life that's making me unhappy. <laughs> what's the, the root and, of that. And we can talk about that. But this would be until good if then, you don't get up biting my nails is such a pleasure. You get a good tear going. <laughs> just oh, rip it. Yeah, man, it's good. <laughs> but for this, like, say you set an alarm for yourself in the morning and you're wearing it. Um, it would vibrate, then it would beep, and then it would shock you and give you a zap. Mm, so a lot of people are complaining that it uh, the actual device doesn't work that well. But uh, some people, <laughs> I like this. There's somebody who says, like, 
they've been in recovery from alcohol, and they say that this thing has helped them with relapses. Like it keeps them sure. from. Well, uh, this is it's. They say it's a brain training because uh-huh. soon it's like if you ever see your dog have a shock collar, your dog, and and then by way of this will learn uh-huh. that it uh, it first there. trains you by vibrating. Right. So then after an amount of time, your brain's going to learn. All right, it vibrated. I got to stop what I'm doing. If not, it beeps, and then your brain's going. Wait a minute, we're really learning now. So it wants you to stop what you're doing before you get to the shocking, like the zapping part. Mm-hmm. So isn't that nice? Yeah, isn't great. That what you I guess. Do? Like this is a great. You're going to train your brain. <laughs> so and, it, the shock clock. It seems like there's also plenty of um, uh, what's the word? They're fake ones <laughs> that well, look just like it, sure. but they're not real. <laughs> sure. Well, you'll have to do a little research, but this is a possibility. And as Nikki said, you can also do the the uh, wrist snap thing with a rubber band. But, I mean, is that as effective as an electric shock? I'll tell you if you want to try the rubber band first, because uh, rubber band you find for free. And this is $200, and it has three out of five stars for reviews. Well, you know, people are always going to be hard on it. Because <laughs> it's going to be shocking you. So, I mean, you know how it is. <laughs> you t- They're just you, angry. You pick which one you want to try first just to see if it helps Mm -hmm. (laughs) is it healthy eating so many snacks chips and oreos every single morning no of course not but they do it for you too many guys got their stomach for this line of work that's real love it's the riot on radio you nikki i got some uh action on twitter here (laughs) yeah i'm gonna have to bring you in on sure uh is this on our radio you official twitter no come on it's just something you saw trending this is a private twitter moment that i feel like i need you to comment on from brianna uh, last week, we were talking about bubble tea. We were. And Why said, were we talking about bubble tea? What was the reasoning behind it? Who knows? Oh, the person with the x-ray. It was in somewhere. <gasps> right. Yeah. They were full of bubble tea. It was somewhere, I think, in China, and there was an x-ray floating around, and a story about a girl, she would drink bubble tea all the time. And bubble tea has these little, like, pearls in it, tapioca, like, little balls. And mm-hmm. so you can eat those, and uh, not everybody likes it. I think they're great. I like bubble tea. But for her, she would never digest it. So the x-ray shows, like, her whole inside full of these little bubble tea balls she's a big walking (laughs) tapioca ball she had to have a medicine to get her body to like process it no i don't think that's what happened (laughs) that's the word i don't think it was processed it is technically that's right moved moved them out Mm -hmm. how could she get them out of her body (laughs) i don't know nikki how did she get them out? and it worked the medicine worked again to process it (laughs) so okay uh brianna says to us i got bubble tea because of this and popping boba tea yeah. on Friday. What the heck is it's, I know what bubble tea is, but what's popping boba? It's like pop rocks with it, with the the little balls. So it kind of pops in your mouth. Oh gosh. Like pop rocks. I know, but like haven't you ever heard about that girl that had the pop rocks and with then the drank Pepsi? the coke and then like her stomach exploded? I think that's an urban legend. Is it? <laughs> I think it is. You know, Nikki, legends often find themselves <laughs> in fact. No, I think that's just people being afraid. Okay. But Obi mentioned so. he thinks bubble tea is the grossest thing ever, so. Hey, well, I didn't say ever. Nothing's grosser than an onion, Nikki. <laughs> it's worse. What if it was little baby pearl onions in the bottom of a drink? That could be the worst thing for him ever. That's horrid. <laughs> That is a horrible thing. Well, what was thing. her name again? Uh, that was Brianna. Brianna, thank you. She says I would like popping boba. Jocelyn just texted, I love bubble tea. I hope I never have issues because it's so good. Okay. Well, we know what issues you're meaning. And yes, you should be fine unless you're full of it and you just don't know it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and how will you know? Gotta get an x-ray done. <laughs> gotta have an, excuse me, doctor, like an x-ray. I think I'm full of boba. <laughs> to make sure that my, I'm okay. You should have tried popping boba. Then your intestines would have exploded. No, but maybe that gets it moving or something. You know how you're supposed to like sometimes shock your body sometimes? Yeah, okay. All right. Like Sounds if you're good. on a diet and they're like, oh, have you plateaued? And they're like, have something that's bad. And then that'll just get your body like, oh, what are we doing? Or I just have something that's bad. And I'm like, you're right. I'm back to gaining weight again. <laughs> I can never go back to what we were doing. Well, thanks, Jocelyn and others for texting. You can always tweet at us as well. It's at Radio U Official. It's weird how I always things come in waves. I had a friend of mine, unrelated, 
who I talked to this weekend, and she was like, oh, yeah, we were at blah, 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 and we stopped by and got some bubble tea. It's so good. Have you ever had it? I'm just like, what is going on? <laughs> the show goes into your real life? Yes. I, if somebody told me that my life was a simulation or just a dream, <laughs> I would believe it. Because it's like, we talk about bubble tea one day, and then someone shows up talking to me about it. It just happens. Oh, what is going on? It's, it's like when the ads, uh, because you've been talking about something, and the ads show the same thing. It's like, how is that even possible? It's a glitch in the matrix. Man. Using advanced technology, we've digitized and transcoded Obadiah and Nikki into a purely digital format. This is the worst of the riot podcast. What is this? That I sent you? Dead whales? <laughs> I didn't read all the story yet, but uh, it's about um, if you are in a certain area of Washington, um, the state is urging landowners <laughs> because they have a problem and they want to know if more landowners who are along the coast of waterfront. Uh, so if you have a waterfront property, they need your help with something. They want you to leave the dead whales where they are. So if you've got a dead whale that's washed up on your waterfront property, the people at NOAA, that's the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, would like it if you would leave the dead whale there so they can just come by and watch it. Well, they wanted to decompose somewhere, and then when done, they would like the skeleton that's left behind to be used for educational purposes. So there's been about 30 gray whales who've been stranded in Washington so far this year, which is the most, and they say, in two decades. And uh, they would like people to allow. I don't know if they if a, a whale gets stranded somewhere and it dies, they then take it over to someone's land or if it if it actually lands up and then they ask the owners where it's at. Does that make sense? Like, are they moving it? Well, OK. I have that easily m- multiple done? things. One, <laughs> if there was a dead whale that was just outside my window, what I would be doing? like, you know what? I'm interested in having this dead whale removed. Yeah. So, but they want owners who would allow it to stay there yep. on their property mm-hmm. for no financial. Do you get anything? No. You don't this get is, money? It's for science. Oh, that's the worst. Mm hmm. So, that's what they want to do. I, okay. This reminds me of. This time, my friend's dad, mm-hmm. he was he was raising a cow for slaughter. Oh, well, uh, I know it just happens. Don't you have like burgers for breakfast? Where, okay, first do you off, think they remove tone? Do you think they watch remove the meat surgically? Your tone, it seems a bit much. I'm just saying. You understand? Your do tone. you understand? I understand. Where meat comes, it's, it's not just from sad a meat. When it's you not see from it, a meat tree. I couldn't have it just grow up, and I know its name and everything. No, that's exactly what he did. He had this cow that was going to slaughter the next day. Yeah. <laughs> and it had a like a heart attack or something and died. The day before? Yes. Oh no. So all of the sudden, like if And you, you can't have, take it to slaughter. No. Like and if you have a, a an animal that dies on your property, at least where he lived, it's your responsibility. To remove and you, it. You have to like bury it or have it removed or whatever. So that's my thought is like if you have a dead whale that washes up, is it like the dead cow? Do you have to like is it your responsibility? Like you have to pay for dead whale removal? I don't know, but I did find the answer to one of my questions. So for this particular whale that they're talking about with this couple who's now going to let it on their oceanfront property to decompose. It did not die there. It died somewhere else. And, and just then a, washed up? No, a response crew towed it to the site where the homeowners will leave it to be decomposed. Oh, no, no, no. So then There's going to have to be serious financial <laughs> I recompense. I know. I thought when I saw the article, I thought, oh, then you must get a couple thousand dollars or something, right? That I don't see that anywhere. But for science, then you let it decompose there. Then they can have the skeleton and be able to do research on it. Whoa. Okay. So here's a text from Rachel. I do like this. You know, I was thinking about the whales. What if my neighbor has a dead whale and he decided to let it stay there and rot and the whole neighborhood would stink. So you would need to get everybody that has a dead whale to remove it for it not to continually stink up your area. Right. I think it's only in parts where like if you have waterfront property, no one else is near you. What do we do? It's not like you're in a subdivision. Who just happens to be on water. Well, They're not going to let you do that. I mean, in fairness, I'm not geographically familiar with exactly how this is laid out. 
But I just a heads up, like for everybody. Um, I don't care what it is. If it's dead, I want it out of here. Unless it's in my fridge. You just go out with trash bags. You're like, you okay. Be, would you be willing to allow this dead whatever to decompose on you? No. No, I'm thank not. you. I'm not. But they're looking for people. So if you're in Washington, they need your help desperately. <laughs> Noah wants to talk to you. Yes. <laughs> Are people really still listening to the riot? You don't have work to do or laundry to fold or literally anything else to do? The Riot Radio U. Now, Nikki, over the weekend, a lot of people didn't go to the movies. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you kind of did, but box office is dead. I didn't feel, is it doubt? I didn't feel like it was anything kind of major coming out. They, no. There's not. I mean, there was Men in Black International. But they they thought that was major. No, yeah. you knew that was going to do bad, which it did. I think it it made more internationally than it did here in the United States, but still not enough. Well, I thought it would do okay because it had Chris Hemsworth in it, and all the ladies be like, "Chris, come on!" <laughs> not even that could save it. And it had the girl whose name I can't remember. She was Valkyrie in the Thor movie. She was in Westworld on HBO. And uh, oh, she was in something. Yes, because she was in Creed and Creed Two. Uh, so she like you know she's got some street cred there. Like I I really expected it to do better than it did. Twenty eight million in the U.S. It was the number one movie over the weekend with twenty eight million. Seventy three, I think uh, internationally seventy three million. Secret Life of Pets two was at number two. Aladdin was at three. Dark Phoenix at four, bringing its grand total to fifty one million. It's all right. <laughs> it's not, but you know, it's okay. Rocket Man at five, Shaft, which was the new movie, uh, number six, and then my good friend Godzilla, for whom I have really Aww, been pulling. He's still there, though, at least. He's still in the top 10. Seventh place. Look at that. Making $8 million. Woo! Boy, I'll t- Tessa Thompson. Thanks, Izzy. Thanks for texting um, that. <laughs> I'll just tell you right now if it weren't for the fact that they had, were already making a Godzilla sequel. <laughs> So wait, what's the total on Godzilla? It's made uh, worldwide in the U. Well, U.S. It's been ninety three million. Yeah, but worldwide, I, that's the big number. I don't know. Well, that it, it could do way better. Okay, let's see. Godzilla King. Shoot, I did two Ks. King of Monsters. <laughs> I just international to box it. office. <laughs> uh, da, 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 mm-hmm. international box office results. Let's see, domestic ninety three million, production budget one hundred and seventy million, international two hundred and forty five million. Worldwide, Godzilla has made three hundred and thirty nine million. Yeah, so that's if you put it all together, all of it together. So yep. I mean, like it, it made its money. That's back. pretty good. That but is course, pretty good. Its budget was one one hundred and seventy million, so it's made it over that. Production the problem budget. is that we don't know what the advertising budget was and like all the other stuff. So it's like they put a lot of money into a movie and. You know, I'm just trying to put the Godzilla glass half full. OK, yeah, you're trying to put a good spit on it. And I appreciate <laughs> that as a Godzilla fan myself. But I do feel like it was a pretty poor showing for the box office weekend. Of course, everybody else for Toy Story 4. That's this weekend. That's yeah, that is this weekend. Uh, Toy Story 4 is out this weekend. And I've got a list. Toy Story and Child's Play. You know, Which, that's not an accident. Doesn't that seem like a double feature? I, we're going to take the kids to see that movie about the doll that comes to life? Are you hoping someone misses and goes to the wrong theater and oh, gets tickets to that? I want to be there when that happens. I could see you a just, grandparent doing that. Like, oh, Child's Play, that must be it. Uh, that's the one your mom was telling me about. We should take you to. Uh, then next week, you've got Annabelle Comes Home. Another Annabelle movie. Possessed Doll. Mm. I mean, again, Tis child's, the season. child's Play, Annabelle. How many possessed dolls do we have? Technically, isn't Toy Story kind of? Uh... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, kind of. Not, like, badly possessed. Oh, my gosh. But it's still a doll. Uh, June 28th, you've got a movie out called Yesterday. I believe that's the one where the idea is, like, the Beatles music never existed. Yeah, so somebody starts. I saw re- the trailer yeah. for that. Uh, and then July 2nd, you've got Spider-Man. Far From Home. That'll be the one. That'll make a 100 bajillion dollars. That'll fix it all. That'll put them back on top. <laughs> if you're looking for all the funny moments you missed during the riot, we apologize. You won't find them here. There, there weren't any. This is the worst of the riot podcast.
While we're on this movie stuff, I'm taking a look at basically the rest of the summer when it comes to movie releases, and I really think it's time for me to cancel my Stubbs A-list. You've got no upcoming movies that look good enough to go see. I'm oh, like I kind of wanted to see Shaft, even though I haven't seen a single trailer oh, for terrible. it. Terrible. So, no, it it's looks not a, so bad. It's not about that. I'm it's surprised about, they didn't even make it. It's about John Singleton and uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson's Shaft movie was also bad, but for some reason, it just says it's an okay bad. Yeah, something about it, I guess. Uh, so let's see. Then we've got all the horror movies. I don't want to see Toy Story four. I'm sorry, but I don't. I'll probably end up seeing it because just like a lot. Lot of other things you kind of get dragged into it but i'm not really up for that there's spider-man which looks good but then there's nothing i'm interested in again until fast and furious hobbs and shaw another movie that is not going to be good but that's why no, i want to see looks it like that might be good no but when it's is that? going to be a bad movie but it's going to be a good bad movie oh, it's a good looking bad movie and yeah, that's I, fine. I that's fine sometimes i mean we've really crossed fast and furious has been in like over the top for a long time. But the fact that we've now gotten to the point that Idris Elba is a genetically enhanced, it's like, guys, is that where is he you cyber- start? Yes. Or cybernetically enhanced or whatever. It's like, so Idris Elba is the Terminator. Is that what you're saying, actually? Because that's where I'm at. And can't Idris Elba just be the villain? Like, he was in that Star Trek movie. You couldn't even recognize him under all those prosthetics. It's like, that dude, one, he's a good looking guy. Two, I think he's very charismatic. And three, he'd be a great villain. No trimming. Don't just put any villain. makeup on him. Don't make him a robot. He's just the bad guy. I see what you're saying. He's good enough, Nikki. I know. He's I, good enough. I see what you're saying. Sorry. But that's not how it's that just is. A, I'm sorry. I needed a moment. Okay. So now we've got two movies. When from does my, that one come out? August. <laughs> so it's a so you hot, got, barren wasteland of the summer. You got Spider-Man at the beginning of July. And nothing. Hobbs and Shaw at the beginning of August. <laughs> still looking. You're oh, still, you're who, looking anybody want to go see the Dora movie? No. Oh, no. How about the Angry Birds movie, too? How are they making another Angry Birds movie? But, hey, there's a lot of money. That's international money, too. How are they making that movie? And then, nope, no. No. You it really, chapter two, no. You really should cancel your movie thing. No. Oh, the Downton Abbey movie is coming out. That's in September. They got that in Rambo Last Blood. Is that every, also on the same weekend? Every time Stallone makes a movie, he's like, this is my last one. And he's like, well, one more. We'll just do another one. No big deal. So I'm Any I'm others looking, you want to talk about? October, we got Joker. <laughs> I think that movie looks terrible. Um, the it just act, looks depressing. The, the it's it's depressing because it looks so dumb. Okay, <laughs> you have a lot of feelings today. The Adams Family on October 11th. No, a new Maleficent movie. Oh yeah, that's the okay. one. Anything that doesn't have a comment with it. Zombie Land Two. No, I haven't seen anything on that. I haven't either. Um, well, we've we've gone through most of the year. <gasps> oh, here we go. In November. We got a new Terminator movie. Oh, that, that's, those always play well. That'll be poor, too. Did you know there's a new Charlie's Angels movie in November? I did not. I didn't know that either. You know, since that last TV show failed, I'm sure the movie's the way to go. Frozen 2. Mm. Okay, now we're into December. It's not looking good, guys. And you've gone through almost the whole year. I haven't even gotten enough to fill up my a month of movie pass usage. It's not good. I think I want a podcast from you or something to where you just give your thoughts on each movie. Really, like now we're we're not even letting you go like the whole way. I think if you had a more open sort of like opportunity. Just like more space to explore. Yeah, yeah. Like that seems like a bonus podcast. But, you know, I could. But they say this is one of the things they'll tell you if you go to a broadcast seminar. People don't want to just listen to a hater. Well, no, that's why it's on a podcast. So you can be just, a hater there, and can, that's that's then the catch that you have. If they're like, hey, you know, this is my hating podcast, people might like it. The whining, the loathing, the insightful commentary on postmodern historical doctrine. Okay, maybe not the last one. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. You know, aside from the maple... And the Mounties and the Apologies. There's something else that Canada is known for. Not the drinking, uh, something else. 
Nikki, and that is that they're really nice. Well, I was going to say poutine. Okay. <laughs> Aside from poutine, they say they're really nice in Canada, they which are. is why you get all those apologies, you know, because they're just so nice. And I am sorry to tell you that I have a story that is just going to reinforce the niceness factor. How nice of they are. All right. Chantel and Ryan, you know what they won over the weekend? What they did? They won a supermarket sweep contest where you get to run in and just, man, throw everything you can in the in the cart. Woo! Everything you can in the cart. Wow. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> in like a legal way. Well, yeah. Because, I mean, I can't remember what I saw, but when I was a kid, I saw something where, like, another kid had won, like, a Toys R Us shopping spree, and they're just, like, running down the aisles, throwing stuff in the cart. And I was like, I want to do that so bad. You can, Wait. but you want someone to pay for all the stuff that you put in the cart. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure with the right credit card. I can make my dreams come true. You can sweep the whole shelf if you wanted, but you're paying for it. Yeah, it's not the same, right? So, but this is what's really awesome. Here's what they decided to do. Uh, they said at first, they're like, oh, well, let's grab this, this, and this. And they're like, no, 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 We're doing this all wrong. They took their supermarket sweep contest winnings and they went to the food bank to find out what they needed. Yeah. And they filled their carts oh, and donated it all to a food sweet bank. sweet is that? Yeah. That's what you get. That is nice stuff right there. Telling you. It's like, that's awesome. Is humanity doomed? Sure we are. Are there still good good people out there? Absolutely. That is so sweet. I mean, for every, you know, bad sequel we get, there are people out there doing stuff like, so that's just, come on. Good job. Now, what you could do is if you were a part of the supermarket, you could. Then you match the donation? Yeah, you can match the donation. Or you could allow them another supermarket sweep thing, but then they can keep that one if they want. I think it's pretty great. It's like that nice. was That was nice. I mean, that would have been something that could have been just for them, and instead they decided to put it into their community, and I think it's great. Or have you ever seen where it's like you get all this stuff, and you're like, well, I'll give you one little thing <laughs> you know it was nice that they and we decided to donate this box of instant <laughs> pancake mix <laughs> of the to one the thing food i pantry. don't want that i actually you know i accidentally fell into the cart we'll so let them have it nice for them to do something good yeah it is so good good on them and i know what you're thinking well if i ever win big i'll give too maybe uh-uh. there's just something small that we could all do today wouldn't have to be something big if we all did something small and we just did that a lot mm. it'd be amazing plus the biggest thing they always say is if you'll never do anything when you don't have much then when you do have much you, you're not doing it you're never going to do anything then yep <laughs> got to start somewhere got to start small <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Oh no, I missed it. Do it again. You can hear us live every day on the Radio U Network through the Radio U app or at riot.radiou.com. I'll kill your whale for you. Just call me.